I am a gynecologist. I got bored, so ask any obscene questions about my profession. Are there any misconceptions about female anatomy that you would like to dispel? Hmm, the only thing that comes to mind is G-Spot. Delusion lies in the fact that everyone thinks that this is some kind of real anatomical structure. I'm sure there are other misconceptions, but I have no idea. Should we shave before an appointment or not? I've always wondered if doctors condemn us for having pubic hair. Doctors don't judge you. Most of the time, I don't care at all. Except when you have folliculitis, and I ask you not to shave and you keep doing it. Then it can really stress me out a little. How often do women's labia stick out? How often are they more like inside? I only had one girl with protruding labia. Does that mean they are less common? It doesn't matter if they stick out or not. Anatomically, there is no problem in this. But if they interfere with a girl's life, for example, rub against clothes or simply cause discomfort, then labiaplasty can be done. After so many years in gynecology, have you lost your sex drive? Do you need to provide any psychological help, even though you studied to be a gynecologist, not a psychologist? Or do you stay with them? Because usually such cases are associated with physical complications. Both. I have to conduct the birth from beginning to end, including postpartum care. Best experience? Worst experience? The best experience. A 17-year-old girl was brought to me after an unsuccessful abortion. Blood was everywhere. Not only did I save her life, I also avoided a hysterectomy, removal of the uterus. Worst experience? Any childbirth where dead babies are born in full term. What happens when a dead baby is born? Are you quick to express your condolences and go off filling out paperwork, or do you spend some time with the mother? You have to spend a lot of time with them. They need me much more than parents who got a live baby. They don't care about you already, 15 seconds after the end of childbirth. Have you ever accidentally brought a patient to orgasm? No. And purposely? <laughs> Still no, but I know all the tricks, so I could. Damn rules of ethics, they always ruin everything. Ever had to remove stuck objects from a patient? A lot. Basically, all sorts of balls get stuck. Often come across balls from the pool, billiards. They are just the perfect size to get stuck in. There were also golf balls. What is the ugliest thing you have to deal with? With patients who weigh 180 kilograms. Well, with all sorts of weird things from gynecological oncology that defy any description, cancer sometimes looks pretty disgusting. If we're talking exotic, I've seen a couple of dermoid cysts filled with hair and jelly-like fluid. Once I took triplets, one of them died at the 15th week of pregnancy. I was not ready for such an answer. It seems I won't sleep well tonight. If you decide to become an objin, you will sleep like a sweetheart. We have so much work and calls in the middle of the night that it is simply impossible not to sleep in a free minute. I understand that you're a girl, but I think a lot of people want to know. Have you ever had patients who were happy to see you more than others? Mm-hmm, of course, I'm that little hottie. But seriously, it seems like no. I've had patients who prefer women, but you know, in a hospital environment, when you're nervous and all that, it's hard to turn on. Then, no. My periods are always different, with different intervals and the amount of liquid. Is this kind of inconsistency normal? If there are 21 to 35 days between cycles, it is necessary to count from the first day of one period to the first day of another period, and they last from 3 to 7 days, then they are considered normal. Therefore, you should not expect that they will appear at the same time every month. If you often go beyond these parameters, then it is better to go to the doctor and make sure everything is in order. I am 25 years old and my libido is at zero. I don't even want my handsome neighbor. Any thoughts on what's wrong with me? If the examination did not reveal any problems, if the blood tests are in order, etc., then I usually involve an experienced psychologist to solve such problems. As a rule, the cause is in depression or anxiety, or both. In addition, medications that fight depression and anxiety can cause problems. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to check your libido separately because there are very few such laboratories. But I can tell you that if you don't have other symptoms, then it is unlikely that the problem is related to hormones. How many people, when they hear about your profession, joke about vaginas? Answer in percentage. 
up to 1%, but when I hang out somewhere with other doctors, stories about vaginas pop up all the time. It was always interesting, how do people come to such professions? I used to study humanitarian sciences, but then I got bored and switched to biology and chemistry in the hope that someday I would be something like a pharmacologist. Of course, I didn't even have thoughts of going to medicine, but then I decided to study medicine to become a pediatrician or a dermatologist. I promised my husband that I would not look at surgery and gynecology at all, but then I went to practice in obstetrics, gynecology, and realized that as a thrill seeker, this is exactly what I need. I remember once at 2am, I was running around the hospital all smeared with bloody amniotic fluid and thought, damn, I'm here. In middle school, and I think in high school too, I got my period twice a month. When this came up, my stubborn parents refused to take me to a western doctor and took me to some Chinese healer. I don't know how, but it helped me. Everything fell into place. I still don't have an explanation for how it happened. Maybe you have? What was wrong with me? At this age, it's completely normal. That's right. Changed. This is caused by the immaturity of the hypothalamic pituitary system in terms. Do you go to another gynecologist for a general checkup, or can you do such things yourself? I'm asking seriously. I understand that dentists go to other dentists, but is it different in your case? Um, I'm going to another gynecologist. She also performed a Caesarean surgery on me when I was giving birth to my son. I'm a guy who's thinking about retraining as an ob gin. Do you think guys have harder time in this area? It seems to me that it is easier for women to find patients. It all depends on where you live and who you work with. Some ethnic groups clearly prefer female gynecologists, but I did not notice that men were somehow clearly oppressed. It is always good when the team is diluted with several men. In fact, many men are very compassionate, and they are excellent obstetricians because a man will never say, oh yes, I went through this, what are you whining about? It doesn't hurt that much. How big are your student debts? How much do you earn? <laughs> you need to ask this in the thread, I'm married to a gynecologist and I pay all our bills, ask questions. In fact, the numbers are constantly changing. I pay off my student loan all the time, but in different ways because my salary depends on my productivity. Do you do abortions? Are all objins taught this at the facility or is it optional? When you do an examination, do you try to distract the patients with chatter? I still can't understand what is more embarrassing, complete silence during the examination or when the doctor tries to talk to me. I do not deal with artificial termination of pregnancy, but if such thoughts creep into the patient, then I am obliged to consult with her on this issue. The surgical procedures are the same as for a miscarriage, vacuum aspiration and curatage, so no additional preparation is required. About the inspection, if I see that the patient is very nervous, then I ask if she wants to talk. As a rule, they reject my offer and freeze all the time in their smartphones. Sometimes I try not to utter too much words so as not to inadvertently distract them from writing another tweet. Hashtag, I'm doing a swap. I am 30. In my entire adult life, I have never been to a gynecologist. I even went to the family doctor just a couple of times. I never got sick. Do you think I should go check it out? I don't experience any problems. Just go for a checkup. Some diseases, such as cervical dysplasia, which in turn leads to cervical cancer, are usually completely asymptomatic. My youngest cervical cancer patient was 27, but precancer can occur much earlier. My wife worked as a gynecologist midwife for several years. I heard so many horrors from her. Do you think it's possible to get used to the smell of bacterial vaginosis? Unreal. Can you imagine how it was for me to work when I was pregnant, when I was always nauseous and could smell any smell from a mile away? I could diagnose it across the entire office when the patient just opened the door. How often do patients not shave down there? Does it make you uncomfortable? It all depends on the season, age, geography, and social status. Often, I just do not pay attention to such things. We get tired, you know? We are not up to it. Unless hair gets in the way of our work. I myself am a girl, so I understand everything. Hair doesn't bother me as long as, again, it doesn't get in the way. It's only at times like this that I think, really? So long? So, who still shaves more often? Urban, strippers, girls 16 to 22, everyone shaves more often in the summer. 
Does blue waffle disease exist? No. Are you married? What does your husband think of your work? I am married to a wonderful man who has nothing to do with medicine. He doesn't mind, only glad that I make more money than the average young wife. And that's great! Do you think that if you switched professions, your feelings for him would change? Wouldn't you be jealous? No, because, in terms of ethics and morality, my husband is much more perfect than I am. All male gynecologists perceive it simply as a job. My wife is a gynecologist, and I am absolutely satisfied with her work. The only thing is, I always ask her to take a shower after her shift, so that when she tells me about all the horrors, she will be clean. The only problem with her profession is her friends. She has so many friends and girlfriends in medicine that, when we get together, they never stop talking about work. And it turns out that instead of having a great time, I have to sit and listen to their favorite topic, in which I do not understand half of the words.